Hey guys, welcome back to uh, a post Super Bowl uh, episode of Football Update. This is Andy, and this is Robin. Uh, before we dive in to uh, the Super Bowl and our thoughts on it, uh, we just want to go through some news throughout the mm-hmm. league. Uh, Robin, I, I leave it to you. Yes. So uh, the final two head coaching. Um, hirings um, completed. Uh, the Washington Commanders going with Dan Quinn, former Atlanta Falcons head coach and the defense coin the last three years for the Cowboys. Um, bringing on staff Cliff Kingsbury as offensive coordinator, Anthony Lynn as run game coordinator, Larry Izzo as special teams, Daryl Tapp from Dallas going from the assistant D-line coach to the D-line coach in Washington, Um, Joe Witt, defensive coordinator. Brian Johnson, formerly the OC of the Eagles, coming in as the assistant head coach and passing game coordinator. Um, David Blau, who was once on Hard Knocks, competing to be the backup quarterback for the Lions, is the assistant quarterback's coach, and they're all working with the new GM, Adam Peters, who was the assistant GM in uh, San Fran. Uh, And then the last head coaching hiring... um, was Mike McDonald, the defense coordinator of the Baltimore Ravens, number one ranked defense, um, being the new head coach of the Seattle Seahawks. Leslie Frazier, a mentor of his as the assistant head coach. Aiden Dirty as the defense coordinator. Ryan Grubb, the offense coordinator, was with the Washington Huskies team that went to national title. Jay Harbaugh, uh, Jim Harbaugh's son, originally was going to be the special teams coordinator in L.A. Um, with Jim Harbaugh, but now will be the special teams coordinator in Seattle. Cowboys replacing Dan Quinn with Mike Zimmer. And then the Bills completing their coaching staff with uh, Jamila Dye as the new cornerbacks coach from Miami. Scott Booker as the Nichols and defensive special assistant. Ronald Curry from New Orleans coming in as the quarterbacks coach. Offensive quality control coach hire was DJ Mangus, who was with UB as an offensive coordinator and tight ends coach, and he's a longtime friends and one-time roommate with Joe Brady. So that's some of the um, big coaching news. Um, Jimmy Garoppolo spending two games and losing an $11.5 million bonus and a uh, guaranteed bonus. I think it was the third or fifth day of the year league year. So likely the Rays will receive or release him. And they added offense coordinator Luke Getze and running back coach Cadillac Williams. So uh, Andy, just a bunch of highlights of those coaching names and everything else. Is there anything news-wise or coaching staff-wise that sticks out to you? Um, I'm just, you know, I have a friend from Washington, you know, just, mm. just really feels like the fresh new year. Like this mm. Yeah. The testing year, you know, they're just trying to see what they have on the off. Like, they still have some great weapons on that mm-hmm. team, you know, great defense. And they got, I think Cliff Kinsbury would be a very good coordinator. Mm-hmm. And Dan Kidd was a pretty good head coach. He took yeah. him to a Super Bowl, you know. So there's that. And then not only do they have one of the top three picks, I think there's like three quarterbacks right now. Right yep. Now, mm-hmm. the yep. The Caleb, Drake, May, and uh, Jaden Daniels. And then J.J. McCarthy kind of as that wild card number four. And, and again, like we said, mm. since you have the, the command, uh, commanders at three. You know, they got shot chance at one out of three. They maybe even two out of three because yeah. there's there's people like me who, it, it, and again, it's just my mm. opinion. We'll definitely talk about it for our mock draft or somewhere mm. around March or so, but... I think it'd just be very foolish put if the Bears... Again, this is just my opinion. I just think the Bears' best move would be keep, you know, fields, and you can draft potentially one of the best receivers of a generation who, you know, is even half as good as his dad, Marvin Harrison Jr. He might be close to a halt. Like, because again, for people who are alive or, you know, just little kids around the 2000s, like... I, I people think this is blasphemous. I think he was the best wide receiver of the two thousand. He's up there, yeah. So you know, it's, it's very interesting, but um, yeah, it just it just could be very interesting to see, mm. you know. And also, they have eighty three million dollars in cash. Yeah, yeah. So it's just yeah, it's be interesting, and 
you know, one thing that popped in my head was how funny it would be if they signed Kirk Cousins back. But then, then <laughs> yeah. Well, at the same time, though, probably not. Yeah. They definitely, you, you'd think they definitely would sign a veteran quarterback, though, for, um, <clears throat> excuse me, for the, uh, which, whoever they pick. Yeah. They'd kind of be like a, like a veteran presence. I have the interesting name I would throw out is because of how much of that coaching staff, um, Anthony Lynn being the run game coordinator. And the one thing with Cliff is sometimes the, um, what is it? The offense he runs, a lot of air raid concepts, and there's not enough of a commitment to the run sometimes in Arizona. I felt now with a guy like Anthony Lynn that they always made sure to have the run game and the pass game complement each other um, very well. Um, so I think that'll be a good fit. Um, the one guy I'm looking at, Sam Darnold, actually, because he just spent time um, with Adam Peters, you know, the new GM, um, some of that coaching staff in San Fran. And you know, he's a former top five pick, still has talent. Kyle Shanahan liked him quite a lot because he searched him out and was willing to like basically give him the backup job over uh, one time top five draft pick and Trey Lance. Um, and maybe Lance wasn't, you know, their cup of tea by then, but it, Darwin was definitely a guy that they felt had the talent and the ability. If something were to have happened to party, Purdy, Brock Purdy, excuse me, they would have been fine. So I do think, look at that potential connection as him coming in as the vet. And if you draft somebody, um, he can be the bridge to that guy or still the backup. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at the uh, free agents of quarterbacks. If I mm-hmm. uh, there we go. Yeah. Uh, like we said, Cousins, m- not likely because he'll get probably asked for more. But maybe maybe Tan- Tannehill could be a possible. Uh, mm. You know, then you got, yeah. the, then you got, Ty- you got Tyrod Taylor, who is mm-hmm. a good backup. And, I mean, technically Baker's there, but I, I have a strong feeling that the Fox yeah. are going to sign him. Yeah, me too. Very interesting. Um, with the the Garoppolo thing, like um, it just you feel for him, but like it's kind of like the Raiders got very very yeah. lucky. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. You're like, oh, okay, well, we don't. <laughs> yeah, because I think then, yeah, go ahead, sir. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. You you, uh, you finish. I have a oh. oh no problem. Thank you. Uh, so they probably were going to cut him, but it was going to be like post June first to get that a little bit of cap relief, not as much as they got, but now that extra eleven and a half million to go into free agency, and that puts their cap room between that and possibly letting go of Hunter Renfro. It's like sixty sixty plus, and the cap currently it's. Projected to be 243, but Pro Football Talk did say that they're hearing it could go up to 250 million, which would be an extra, you know, five to seven million for every team in the league. So that an ex- any extra money <laughs> helps with the salary cap in that regard. So, um, yeah, they did very much luck out in a situation where they gave him a big contract and then there was that weird holding period where he like had to pass a physical and then they finally gave it to him and then they restructured to help with cap stuff. And by restructuring, they gave him, you know, made it a little bit harder theoretically to get out of that contract. But then this suspension somehow got them out of it. Yeah. Very, very Mm. interesting. Uh, Before we go to the Super Bowl, I actually had an interesting, I listened to something very interesting yesterday. It was on, uh, GPS with Tom Drosty and Brandon mm-hmm. Perna. Uh, they were they were mentioning how you know of all of, of all the Super Bowl windows they're talking mm-hmm. about the Browns and just how I mean say what you will about Russell Wilson but he, he at least is playing decently whereas mm-hmm. John Watson is just like mm-hmm. everything you put in him and, and then all that stuff but yeah. the reason to bring it up was they, they were mentioning that they're the, uh, all of his uh, cases. Uh, the allegations were all settled out of court except for one so Hmm. depending on how this goes if it does 
go criminal or I, mm. I can't remember what the language of his contract is. Yeah. Like, is it like if he's charged with something that they, they haven't asked I th- I think something like that, and in this latest case, the details do, I don't think we even want to go into the details, though, because just the allegation is, you know, but um, it is, I think, something that's potentially, I don't want to say one way or another, that potentially it's outside of um, jurisdiction or too late to do anything with it, potentially, I don't know, I read that it could be, but... Yeah, I mean, unless it, you know, a new one came up, then it would, that would be enough to get them out of it. But I think, I I think they're stuck with that deal for a long time, and they're hopeful that, or at least thing to try to be hopeful that a new OC and Ken Dorsey, who may or may not be calling the plays, will make things easier because it was bizarre that you have the coach of the year and yet you have the entire offensive staff or a bunch of it let go. And the one guy that you really like is Bill Callahan and he, as the old line coach, and he went to Tennessee to be his, on his um, son's staff there. Um, so, th- I mean, the Sean Watson contract in a weird way is the reason you have restructures and void years to try and, you know, push out that money. But the problem with pushing out that money is eventually the bill comes due at some point. So, um, you know, it's a 60 plus million dollar cap hit and they can restructure to make it in the 40s. But, yeah, if the level of play is into 2019, 2020, Deshaun Watson, we're into three straight Pro Bowls and, you know, look like a perennial star player before you know, the end of Houston and everything after that. Um, it's, it's a contract that's going to be one of, if not the big, biggest albatross of all time, in addition to all those picks. Yeah, just, oh. Mm-hmm. Just, yeah. Buyer's remorse, just seeing how... <sighs> yeah. And I think Browns fans and even maybe the ownership like, man, if only Baker didn't really... He should have sat out that year as we... I don't think that yeah. contract has been as expensive as uh, Deshaun's would have been. No, no, yeah. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. But uh, mm. going to the Super Bowl, uh, we unfortunately have another dynasty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the, the thing I always laugh at is just, I, I can't help but feel good for Andy Reid. Yeah. Even, even though they are the new Patriots, and I'm... Mm. I don't know about Robin, and I'm mostly mad, you know, just because the Bills haven't gotten one. Yeah. Josh, hopefully we'll have a year where our defense isn't torn to shreds in the playoffs. Mm. But, um, yeah. you know, you can't help but feel for Andy. You know, he went through all those years. And he just needed to have a player like Mahomes to really implement his systems. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah we a, for, for the most part, a very good Super Bowl. Uh, mm. I don't know uh, about you, Robin. Uh the one thing that, for me, it, mm. it, I might be wrong, but did it feel like that the 49ers kind of gave up on the run a little bit in the second half? Third quarter, definitely. It definitely felt like they were trying to get that one big play in the passing game. And the one, it won't show up much in the stat sheet or in the highlight sheet, but the one possession that you really look and say, boy, if it went differently, um... The, they have a very good chance of not only winning, but at least putting their stamp on, you know, um, putting some pressure on the Chiefs. And that's when they got the interception at about midfield, if not even better than midfield field position. And then they go three and out. They have like a negative eight yard pass and just doesn't, you know, go through. But yeah, they didn't really, I mean, the one or two times they ran it, they didn't, they didn't get more than like a yard or two. But it was a little odd to see them go away from that and their best player in that quarter. That's what I was going to mm, say. Like, yeah. Just, again, I, I, I am, a, I'm not going to lie, I'm a Christian McCaffrey fanboy. Even mm. He was with uh, Panthers. Uh, yeah. Mm. I'll, I'll give it to Lamar this year, but the first MVP Lamar got, I'm still one of the minority mm. parties. Don't get me wrong, Lamar mm. had a great year that year, but I think it should have gone to Christian McCaffrey. Mm. But uh, that's, that's not mm-hmm. it, but just, it just you had the generational best running back. And yeah, that's the one. Like I want to say you guys played a good game, but like like you said, like you, you went away with like 
just trust Christian McCaffrey. He, he, mm-hmm. he feels good yeah. there. But, uh, yeah, very, <laughs> mm-hmm. very frustrating Super Bowl at the end. Uh, you're going to laugh at this. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, again, because not only, not only was I happy at first that, that if the game was supposed to end around 10 ish, you know, yeah. it went into overtime. I had to get up super early for work that next <laughs> oh, yes. So it's like, oh God, I gotta stay up. So I just, just please, <laughs> please let them at least win that I have to stay up. Cause yeah. I, I have never seen an overtime go to end, near end of break, end of regu- regulation. I should yeah. Say. Mm-hmm. And yeah. As soon as he got that, he just ran. The, the San Fran defense was phenomenal the whole game. Just that yeah. Whole, oh my. And as soon as he caught the touchdown pass in over, overtime, I just turned the TV off. Uh, and like, nope. <laughs> but uh, what are your thoughts on the Super Bowl? Yeah, very bizarre. A day or two after, although looking back, there were some signs that the Steve Wilkes 49er relationship wasn't great. Like midseason, they had him. He was in the booth because he likes to, you know, see the whole defense and diagram things from there as a former DB and DB coach. And then... It wasn't just, like, in, like a retaliation. Like, I'm, I'm sure it was a straw yeah. that broke the camel's back. Yeah. Fired, but it wasn't... That wasn't the main reason why. Not ne- yeah, not necessarily, no. Um, but, yeah, most of the times, if you remember, like, Robert Sala and D'Amico Ryans, they're two defense coordinators there. They... Um, they were on the um, sideline, and for at least the first half of the season, that wasn't the case with Steve Wilkes. And then part of the three-game losing streak included sometimes the secondary one that's at its best and everything. I mean, they did have some crushing injuries here and there in the in the Super Bowl with, uh, I just feel awful for Dre Greenlaw on that. Oh, my God. Yeah. When I watched that, I was just like, that, that's, like, yeah. what? Yeah, just. And we thought at first, in my mm. place, that we were like damn turf. But it was like, wait, no, no, they have a grass field in yeah. there. So it's just, yeah. oh, this is bad luck, man. And I fell for him because, again, he was one of the key pieces of that defense. Yeah, and apparently he had, he didn't have a torn Achilles, but he had something Achilles wise um, that he was playing with. And that, for a reason, the way that he stepped was. And I think it was. It was the NFL films, NFL turning point, where you see just the reaction of a couple of teammates going. I think it was Fred Warren and a couple of others just going, no, because they, ugh, you hate when you can see immediately on their face that something was wrong. But, and then, yeah, the Steve, I think even that Super Bowl too, like the very end when they had like two or three third downs where, they played off coverage and blitzed, and they basically kind of gave them a couple easy throws to the outside, and there was another play they were set up like that, and Kyle Shan called timeout and didn't look very pleased. So um, I, he ran a different scheme than what they were used to. Um, so I think they were trying to, you know, find somebody who could do what D'Amico Ryan's did but they couldn't find somebody on their own staff who was experienced enough to do it so they brought in Wilkes who did such a great job as the interim in Carolina and it's kind of a shame the last two years what he's been kind of dealt with but there's massive expectation and um, hopefully he finds a job somewhere I think he's more than worth it it just wasn't a right fit but um mm. yeah I, I, and again the the last thing I'll say about for me about the Super mm. Bowl, like, wasn't one of the best in the world, but it was, yeah. pretty, good, it was a pretty good Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. And again, I, I love me some defense, so that's, mm. that's an exciting thing. Mm. Um, we did want to say this for last, you know, just because of what happened. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. uh, last week, you know, uh, I believe it was Thursday, again, if, I, if I'm mistaken, I, uh, it's either Wednesday or Thursday, but I believe it was Thursday, uh, mm. it was the Super Bowl parade. Yeah. Weekend. And then, uh, unfortunately, the shooting happened. Uh, mm. You know, just you know, even if you're not a fan of the team, like you, know, yeah. you don't hate the actual person or the, the, oh, yeah. city, you know, just, uh, the only positive I can say when the tragedy of the shooting happens and really brings the NFL community yeah. together, you know, realizing you know it's just just a game, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the, 
last thing before I send it to give it to Robin's boss. Like again, no, the loss of life is bad. But I'm just yeah. really happy it wasn't as many as it could have been. Yeah, yeah, and it was nice gestures by both Travis Kelsey and uh, Taylor Swift was the one that donated to the one. I think there were two dead, but there was the one DJ who's unfortunately passed, and um, you know she donated a big. I think it was like. 10 or 100k or something like that to um, help out with the funeral costs and everything that that family's going through. So, yeah, it was a very, very sad day. And it's just frankly something that shouldn't happen. But, you know, hopefully that in the future, less events like that happen. But, well, yeah, we, we mm. uh, you know, just, yeah. But so, yeah, we, we wish the best for all the mm. families. You know, and all yeah. the people that didn't survive. Yeah. Uh, Kansas City are a very tough town. Uh, I, you guys will bounce. Mm. Yeah. Will bounce back with this and become stronger. You know, I, mm. we unfortunately speak for memory because we had mm. our thing a few years ago at Pops. But, you know, just again, my one of my, uh, I know I'm going a little off topic here, mm. but, uh, my grandmother always used to say, even though the worst thing that could happen, there always can be positives from it. And I just, that is, that's my personal belief, you know, mm-hmm. just, this will, like I said earlier, will just make the city stronger, you know. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, see how I rough, rough, rough going. So, alrighty guys. So, uh, mm-hmm. in, in a few weeks, uh, you yeah. know, we get ready for the, uh, free agency, some of our thoughts about it. And then, uh, Oh, so what? What is the uh, official start of the new year? It's like it's usually like, like, like from like the twelfth to like the nineteenth ish kind of usually. Yeah, let me pull that up. NFL year calendar because I think it's there's like the three day free agency tampering or like legal tampering. So NFL twenty three twenty four important dates. Uh, let's see. All right. So March fifth is the um, tag deadline, franchise tag deadline, four p.m. eleventh through thirteenth, March eleventh through thirteenth, beginning at noon. Um, teams are permitted to contact, enter into contract negotiations with players who will come unrestricted free agents on March thirteenth, so they can get into verbal agreements. Um, above two-day negotiating period um and then but no execution of contracts until march 13th at 4 p.m league meeting uh march 24th through 27th and uh the nfl combine is next week on the i think there there's non-field drills i think starting the 27th and then 29th through the third there's a bunch of the workouts, whether it's quarterbacks, receivers, DBs, the linemen, everything. Um, so, yeah, that'll be fun to see how those guys compete and what storylines and, you know, all the GMs, all the coaches and everything, you know, and agents will be there. So there'll be some light communication to see what some of the big moves are. I do wonder if there's a trade up the board or a trade of a quarterback or something um, during or right after that um, event. The, the last thing I want to mention, because mm-hmm. we are talking about free agency, I don't know mm-hmm. if you have the cap space. Like, mm-hmm. one of, Buffalo is one of the worst this year. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like, but the thing that blows my mind, the past two or three years, and they haven't mm-hmm. been that great in a while, but like the same thing, yeah. just like I'm looking at, it's like so not not only is mm. cap over Buffalo, and Miami, were playoff teams, yeah, over by thirty million. Mm. And and I took a look at next year. Sure enough, yeah. they are <laughs> mm. the twenty the uh, one. They're still like at fifty five million. You're mm. kind of like. Well, what when is this gonna? I just I just don't get how they did that. Do you, do you think like the GM is not being 
careful enough? Or? I think it's it's been a thing that they did ever since the like last few years of Drew Brees, where they were basically all in on winning, and you know they just pushed things to the very end. They gave Michael Tom at the time it looked like a great deal to bring Michael Thomas back because he's playing as good as a receiver in the league, and now that contract right. looks rough. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, looking at the and I, I love don't you know, I love me some Taysom Hill, but it's just <laughs> yeah. insane how much they're paying him. And yeah. I'll, I'll be honest, I think he almost is worth almost every penny, just how mm-hmm. many plays, first downs, and touchdowns he gets them. But, mm-hmm. yeah, so looking at it, it's not until 2026 that they're going to be above cap space. Yeah, they, they have some creative people in that front office with the salary cap, no doubt, and... There's some way. There's always the talk that the salary cap isn't real, and it is a real thing. I mean, you can manipulate as much as you want, but eventually the bill comes due. Um, was that Dormammu who said that, or is that somebody else? I'm trying to. Uh, uh, oh my goodness! I don't know his name, but uh, the guy that was Doctor. Sh- I'm forgetting the I'm forgetting the character's name. Uh, the guy that he was kind of like his teacher. Mm-hmm. Uh, the African American actor. Oh, uh, Chiwetel Ejiofor. For who did he play? Yeah, and we're geeks, guys. So this is bad that we're not. Yeah, let me look that up. Uh, Doctor Strange. Bill. Let's see. But yeah, going off that. I mean, the big teams with cap space are Commanders, Titans, Bears, Patriots have started letting some people go. Um, Colts, Texans, Lions, Raiders, and then the Cardinals, Buccaneers, and Panthers. But the um, who was it? The uh, let's see, trying to find that. Uh, yeah, but those are the teams that I kind of look at and go. They are the ones that'll be the biggest spenders. Um, I do wonder, like, if the Texans and the Colts can spend big dollars and still improve their team from where they were, the Colts a near playoff team with the backup quarterback and the Texans team that won a playoff game um, with a rookie. If those teams stand free agency, they're potentially upper echelon contenders in the uh, AFC. But I'm just pulling up that thing right now just it was Mordo Carl Mordo I believe (laughs) any more thoughts on free agency Andy oh I'm sorry I was waiting here uh no no yeah that was uh Mm -hmm. yeah so yeah very exciting Mm -hmm. you know uh, we're gonna wait a few weeks. And, uh, we usually bring an episode out mm-hmm. uh, week before free agency. That our big free agency uh, end of week kind of thoughts. Mm-hmm. And then we got the draft. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The uh, cycle begins. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'll be fun. Yeah, very yeah. fun off season. Never sleeps. But uh, yeah, that is a football update for this week. This is Andy. And this is Robin. Have a good one.